Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to another episode of Tea in the Garden. Today's episode is going to be just a little bit spicy. So if you are someone who is very married to their ideas of how the world works, um, you don't enjoy conspiracy theories, remembering that they are just that, they're theories, um, we like to theorize here, then you should probably go to the next episode or go to the last episode because this one, again, it's going to be a little bit spicy. Um, disclaimer, all of this is for entertainment purposes only. Take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, at the time of filming, Lauren is in, who is our, our resident conspiracy theorist expert. <laughs> she, she is in Florida about, what, two to three hours out from getting hit with Hurricane Milton? Um, it, yeah, it will hit, it will begin hitting Tampa in the wee hours of the morning tomorrow. And this time tomorrow, it will be on its way here. Yeah. So we're so getting ready for it. Coast of Florida. And so I know. Yes, I'm on the East Coast. You with your conspiracy theorist brain, you're looking at everything, weather manipulation, everything, um, climate change, and then also looking at Hurricane Helene, which just hit really hard in Georgia and the Carolinas. Priscilla, you just brought up about the election and those being swing states. So the pur purpose of today's episode is we just want to, um, one, talk about things that we think about a lot and to kind of pull back a little bit and look at the bigger picture on um, this is not a political statement or any kind of statement about the sentiments ASG may or may not stand for um, but as spiritualists we're always looking at the bigger picture what is actually going on what may actually be going on is there foul play present etc so Without further ado, I, I, I think that like the most important thing too <clears throat> is that with all of this, we can gather a lot of <clears throat> this information and data, ask the right questions, and still not come to hard conclusions mm -hmm. at the end. Like we can have theories, we can have, um, we can look at the data or follow the data. We can also remain open, and we don't have to let it create more you know polarity in a sense and i think that we all strive to do that although we still also really like to look at all the information that's presented so that's kind of what we're going to do today i think in the spirit of keeping things a little lighthearted, um yet also deep while so much crazy chaos is happening in the world i think it'll be an interesting thing to kind of chew on the the reasoning behind why some of this may be occurring at the level and scale that it is, right? And that's the interesting thing. And I'm gonna pass the mic to Lauren to start off on this topic. How interesting it is that this is, from what I'm seeing, they're saying these hurricanes are, even Helene was like an unprecedented in size. And it's like, hmm, why? What's going on here, right? What is happening? Um, so yeah, Lauren, what have you been chewing on as one, you've lived in Florida your whole life, so you've, mm -hmm. you've seen a lot of different versions, I'm sure, of um, weather and hurricanes there across the years and what you're thinking and experiencing with this. Yeah, so I come from a unique background in that I am a Florida native. I was born and raised here, and I was also in the military. So I, that gives me a lot of different thinking points than, than most people may have just because they didn't have that experience. A lot of people can think they know what it is like to be in the military and even different parts of the military is very different depending on what branch you're in, where you're stationed, what your job is, et cetera. So with that being said, you know, I have lived through many hurricanes. I have witnessed many hurricanes. I lived here in 2004 when we were hit back to back to back with multiple hurricanes. Um, I've seen what hurricanes can do at their natural capacity. They are incredibly powerful and devastating and 
and so many things, right? So I'm not in any way saying that weather can't do this, but I am also an observer and with the, the information that I have gathered, with the data I have gathered, I was already starting to ponder when Hurricane Helen started to intensify, like, hmm, I wonder what's going on here. And that's always what I try to do is just keep an open mind. I understand that sometimes things are just things that happen um, as a result of nature. And But I also am open to that there are some things that are maybe not, right? Maybe they, they were influenced. So I'm, I try to keep an open mind in all ways. But with this one, I think it's very interesting because while I was just thinking that to myself, like, hmm, I wonder if there could be something else going on here. Um, my immediate thinking went to weather modification. Now we, it's not a conspiracy theory that we are able to influence the weather. There are patents. The U.S. government owns patents on um, weather modification technology. We're, we're past the point of denying that. So we do these things with the intention of weaponizing them. And most people would think, yeah, against our enemies, but there's a lot of things that the that uh, war brings, and it seems like our country really enjoys, uh, I'll say maybe not enjoys, but it makes a lot of money off us going to war with and supporting wars as well as other things, chaos in general. So the U.S. has had a history of using chaos and um, weather as well as other situations to um, take advantage of in wartime as well as with our foreign adversaries and allies. So we have elections going on. We have the Diddy scandal going on. We have like all of these things happening. And then on top of that, we're having these devastating weather anomalies. So while I was thinking, go ahead. Don't forget, don't forget the Middle East and all of our hands in that. Right. Stuff going on in the Middle East, like other countries invading other countries, other countries committing genocides, etc. Um, so there's a lot going on, a lot of polarization, a lot of chaos and disorder. And I think that's part of the plan. Um, but that's a, that's a whole other, that's a whole it all ties in, but that's something that I'll get into maybe later if we get into it. But for now, when I was thinking like, hmm, I wonder what's going on, there started to come out a lot of um, influencer accounts, creator accounts showing that there were strange anomalies happening on the weather radar. Um, and I saw it, I looked at it, I looked it up, right? I just want to take an in information. I never want to um, make a decision just based off of things that I get off the internet, et cetera, because there's a lot of things that can be falsified. There's a lot of false flags. There's a lot of um, fake. There are a lot of fake conspiracy theories. So I really try to just trust my gut, listen to the data, and and not spend too much energy ruminating on these things. Really, I just try and be aware, right? So I was looking at these anomalies that were being shown on the radar and gathering information and just reading and let it go. Because how can I know? Unless I'm there, unless I'm there physically, I will never know. I can have assumptions. I can have gut feelings. I can believe things, but I will, without a shadow of a doubt, not know in this lifetime whether that took place or not. I just let it be. But then a couple of days later, after more and more people started talking about it, I tried to look it up again and I can't find it. I can't find sources of information on the internet about the anomalies, ones that I looked at with my own eyes. So it, it when you start suppressing information as well, that's when my spider senses go up, my little antenna goes up, my, my little conspiracy theory antenna and says, why? What, why? Why would you not allow that information to get through? And why are you flooding this other information to get through? So those are the things on my mind that I was noticing um, and thinking about as we go into this. But it being 
um, an election year and the particular states like Priscilla was talking about, I'll ask her to talk more about that, um, give a little bit more details because I have general knowledge about that, but not as much as uh, you were speaking about before. But yeah, it, it makes me think, and North Carolina being a state and especially the places where there was the most devastation, where there is lithium, there are mines for lithium, which they're using for the battery powered things now and a lot of computer chips, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's just all very interesting and what maybe you, related, maybe not, but I'm sorry. What's, what is the what is the implication with the lithium? Like, well, so, so what I've noticed is when there are disasters that seem to be not natural or and or influenced or magnified, there's a land grab afterwards mm -hmm. by certain companies mm -hmm. and people that I find to be very interesting. So, okay, so one have, like, again, interesting piece of data just to chew on right before four days, I believe before all of Spruce Pines, North Carolina was taken out the number one producer of lithium for the world, by the way, I didn't know this last week. I thought it was just for the United States. They are it produce 80% of the entire world's quartz to make lithium chips for all technology, electric vehicles, cell phones, computers, etc. Okay. They just put in four days before it happened, the mines requested expansion into a ton of domestic territory where all the community members live. The whole community was pushing back. They did not want the mines to be expanded. They wanted, of course, to keep their houses, their community, et cetera. They were pushing back and not allowing it to pass. Also, a few days before the uh, Hurricane Helene hit and wiped the town out, BlackRock invested $2.2 million, million or billion dollars, I forget, into that exact company that mines quartz in Spruce Pines, Illinois, that the mine, the mine itself. And as we also know, BlackRock happens to be the largest, one of the largest owners of land in the entire world at this point, and one of the largest companies in the world. If you haven't heard a ton about them yet, I recommend just, again, looking them up, seeing where all the money is moving. Um, and so that was another interesting little tidbit, I feel related to um, the whole picture. And, and like you said, Lauren, I think it, how, how I, at least at this point in time, 10 years into my uh, evolution, I like to see it as, I feel that most of the time there's little bits of truth in things mixed with things that aren't true. And that's where we get lost. Why a lot of times the media um, can portray conspiracy theorists, quote unquote, let's say, as crazy is because a lot of them are mixing truths with things that are either over exaggerated or not truths, and then they get discredited for it. When in fact, there were truths mixed in that, right? Mm -hmm. And so then they get defamed, they get discredited, of course, they get made fun of and and, and the media weaponizes that, right? Or People mm -hmm. that don't want that information out can weaponize that. And so what I think is the most intelligent thing to do is to actually try to find those kernels of data, right? Of the facts, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let go of the ones that we don't, we don't know. They're a question mark. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Let's not jump to those conclusions yet, but let's also, mm -hmm. let's just look at the pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at the pieces um, and see where they fall. And it's, there's just yeah, a lot of really interesting pieces. So what happened? What happened then as a result of the town being wiped out after the hurricane? People's properties, businesses, and homes are now destroyed. Completely, completely unsalvageable. So what does that open up the land for? The town for? Mm -hmm. you know, I yeah. is it, it's a $90 million contract that Black Rock signed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. And they're, they're just involved in so much. Go look at what they're involved mm -hmm. in, what they own. Um, they also, I believe, if this is the same company that I'm thinking about, own uh, 
Could you verify for this me this for me, Savannah? Gobekli Tepe. Who's that owned by? Which, yeah, which that was them. They just bought it. Go. Yeah, I think they own Gobekli Tepe, which is one of the places um, that is dated past when we think man is capable of doing anything. Basically, caveman time. They built this amazing um, multi-circular. Uh, place and they just bought it and said we are no longer going to be excavating this we want to save this for future generations to discover um and that's linked a lot with yeah yeah very strange also why um not quite sure but i'm sure people have theories but yeah so it's just they're involved in so much and i and you know the government has been known to utilize Again, chaos and disorder in order to put people that they want in power, to remove people they want from being in power. And it, it it's just very interesting. We also know that we have been, the U.S. citizens have been experimented on, you know, in, in different ways with, um, in the past, right? In the 60s, 70s, and even 80s we were having things basically tested on us that the government has admitted to later on with, you know, documents being released, et cetera. So I don't put, I don't, I don't put those type of things past people because people are people, um, whether Mm -hmm. they're in government or not. And oftentimes the majority of people don't know what's going on and, and there's a misinformation on that they're helping or, you know, that type of thing. So I don't think most people really are in control of what's actually going on. Right. It's like most people have, have no full awareness of maybe what they're a Mm -hmm. part of. And this is true in so many arenas of life. Mm -hmm. Like this is Mm -hmm. true in many, many arenas of life. We don't have total awareness at what the top three to one players are doing mm-hmm. and really why they're doing things and what's going behind them, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and it, there's, there's so many angles to look at these things. And again, I think it's, it's a cool, um, I really like this, t- this conversation. I think it's really cool to come at it from this angle because I feel like usually when you're listening to these kind of things, most people are either like really balls to the wall, you know, mm-hmm. deep in the conspiracies and can't see it any other way. Like it's, everything's connected. It's all the Illuminati. Everyone's out to get us. <laughs> I also don't subscribe to that. I think most people, mm-hmm. most things may not necessarily be one all connected and one entity. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And also there's something like another interesting piece of the puzzle is that we, we really have a lot of the corporate side of things at play in mm-hmm. the Western world. It's, it's at this level, when we're saying government, do we actually mean government or do we mean corporate? And sometimes you don't even know which is which, you know? Mm-hmm. And so thinking about it from that level, too, if, if you don't like that word or if that word seems like too large of a generalization for you, I would say also think about it at the level of our the players in our country, how much power they hold, right? How much mm-hmm. income and influence that they that is their domain um, that affects policy, that does affect the government as well, that affects um, more day-to-day life, arguably maybe than even the government itself, right, at this point, because we are in such a capitalistic society, particularly in the United States, but in many ways it's been spreading globally, right? So while something may occur naturally, let's say, we don't know, this hurricane might have already been happening, but what could be, right, this is just a possibility, what could have happened is that this already existing thing that may have hit as a one or a two got cloud seeded to do much more damage because they could see where the pathway was and, oh, this might mm-hmm. actually work to our benefit. Mm-hmm. It's a crazy thing to think about that that there there could be thought processes behind that. And and maybe maybe it's all coincidence. Maybe <laughs> Who knows? Coincidence. Yeah, exactly. Who knows? <laughs> It, I think it's also interesting that for years and years, you know, people denied global warming and those type of things. And, and I don't, and I think it's undeniable that us as a, a species are changing the earth. 
We are changing the natural rhythm um, and function of the earth, just as our hormones can be displaced and imbalanced because of the, the chemicals that we're taking in, the pesticides that we're taking in, the ultra processed food that we're eating. We're not just doing it to the earth, we're doing it to ourselves as well. So while there can be things that are naturally occurring, um, I believe, you know, like with the solar flares and that type of thing, that, that is on a natural solar cycle. And uh, those, th those things do occur, right? But we can definitely do things as a human race and have done things as a human race to make it harder for the earth um, to function the way it naturally does in a way to stay more in balance. And so I think even if we're not intentionally influencing, we are unintentionally influencing the earth and its weather and, you right. know, and all that. And I mean, why are we like, why are we spraying so much in the air? Why are we using so many pesticides? Why is America allowed to serve its citizens food that is banned in other countries because it is known to create cancer and other health issues like Alzheimer's, um, diabetes, all of these things, right? Why are we not, why is that not changing if we're all aware of it now? You know, if it's being yeah. documented, like, why is that still being permitted? It, well, these are the yeah, questions I ask. We start thinking about big pharma with that one. And that's a whole other. But it's so intertwined with, with the U.S. government because the people who are approving this through the FDA, through Congress, through the laws, the money is so intermingled. People are getting um, donations and and grants, and it's it's wild to me, really. I think if you want I to think know it's like on. at the least, at the at the least, it's corruption. Mm -hmm. At the least, it's chosen ignorance that is doing immense destruction. And even if it was just those things, really big red flags, you know. Even if it was just those things, yeah. What were you gonna say, Sam? If you want to know what's going on in this country for real, beyond politics, left or right, um, beyond what the media tells us, just look at the money, right? We just look, we brought in a million dollars. Um, you might look at a food company like Kellogg's who puts carcinogenic preservatives in children's cereal and hormone mm -hmm. endocrine disruptor dyes in children's cereal. You might look at where are they donating to and whose political fund are they donating to? Yeah. Right. That's look at the money, look at the money, look at the money, look at the money. That will tell you mm -hmm. everything that you need to know. So if you're a beginner conspiracy theorist, look at the money <laughs> and definitely learn everything you can about BlackRock. I think that's a really great place to start. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, oh, since, since we're on that topic. Little... <laughs> 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 like, I know, like, we're oh, too, we're too. Too excited. I was just gonna say another kind of insider secret I would I would say. If you're starting to to get convinced that one side is the problem, you've already lost. You're mm -hmm. already not seeing it at the at the truth level. So just know keep going. Keep going further. Keep digging because yes. most of the time, even the let's just say a corporation that is doing a lot of harm in the world is not just funding one party they're funding both you know they're so, funding both cool. they're funding <laughs> both they're like they're whoever wins a good relationship with you so we can keep doing what we're doing yeah pretty much yeah. um another thing that i would say for those of you who are just arriving here or maybe have been here for a short amount of time it can become consuming don't allow it to consume you. It's been going on since before you figured it out, okay? It's gonna continue going on um, <laughs> as you're figuring it out, okay? So you wanna take breaks. You don't wanna become obsessed with this. It can make you, for me, it made me really depressed for a long time. I became very negative. I became very depressed because it seemed like everything sucks um, and we're all screwed. And it can seem like that and it can seem very overwhelming and it can be uh, much easier to take 
it all in and believe it all. You have to understand that, you know, you using your awareness is key. Find balance. Don't just look at the bad. Look for the good too, because it is out there. Um, and and just do it for awareness, for knowledge. That truth can be empowering. Mm-hmm. Finding the truth can be empowering. Swallowing so much information as if it were all truth is going to leave you feeling helpless and hopeless. Mm-hmm. And that is this mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a tactic that's used. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. I was going to say it's, it also is part of the the game and the biggest, in my eyes, the biggest conspiracy of all is the conspiracy that convinces us we have no power. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest lie of all the people, the few only have power by the many that give them power. And while the game seems so complex and complicated, and it is in some ways, very nuanced, we also have unbelievable sovereignty and influence more than we mostly realize. And particularly when we come together in community, whether it's even a small community or a larger community, such as the entire United States or our town or our state that we're voting and such, it it holds so much more sway than we want, like than p- they want us to be convinced of. That's That to mm-hmm. me is the biggest, biggest um, harm that is being put out there is actually the message that we don't have it, you know, that we don't have the mm-hmm. ability, we don't have the, the, the freedom, you know, and the influence that we do. Right, Ooh. exactly. Yeah. yeah, like the the flooding of misinformation with the kernels of truth, like that's a tactic. Creating fear mm-hmm. and chaos mm-hmm. so that you don't know what to choose, that's a tactic. When in doubt, go inside and listen to your gut, not what you've been taught, not what has been programmed, not what's blaring out there. Most of the time I try to look at what is the majority believe? What is the majority paying attention to right now? Okay. That's not it. (laughs) You know, but oftentimes, you know, it's so much more complicated than that. And by really just unplugging actually from the, the, constant flow of information can give you incredible insight and clarity on where your power actually lies. It's easy to lose a game that you don't know the rules to, and it's easy to lose the game when you're constantly looking outside of yourself to source your authority of what's good for you, what's right for you, what's right for your family, et cetera, right? So when in doubt, I unplug and I go in and listen to what makes sense aside from all of the information, what makes sense Mm -hmm. to me. And that's helped me a lot in these situations. Mm -hmm. And like right now I am literally living where the eye is supposed to be passing over. And, you know, whether it's been seated or not, it's coming here in real life. And so I have to focus on, you know, what do I need to do? for me right now, for my mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being, and for my families. And that's not constantly listening to the news. That's not constantly gathering more information. That's that's doing what I need to prepare and then calming my heart and my mind and paying attention to what really matters in this moment, which to me, and I think to most people in the world, it's your your loved ones, your family, you know, is what we're all really about. If any of us can agree on anything, it's, it's that we want to protect those things. And that's oftentimes what is used to get us all riled up and to hate each other or to feel like the other one is threatening that. So. Word. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so good. Uh, I feel like we're coming to a close. I want to retouch before we do a little bit more on the Carolinas and Georgia, some information oh. that you shared earlier mm-hmm. for today about elections. Um, and then I have on the Carolinas as well, some things, just little pieces of information we've picked up that I think we want to add to the pile. I love that. <clears throat> um, yes. Last thing I'll share about some inter- just interesting 
things to think about as part of this whole puzzle is that while you know Florida and a lot of Southern states is very normal to have, let's say, at least in our understanding in the last few decades, it's very normal to have things like hurricanes hitting, okay? At some level, extreme weather, flooding and, and hurricanes. What is not normal is for these such things to be hitting North Carolina and Georgia, especially North Carolina, which is in the mountains and is physically designed to not experience these things, okay? Being in that terrain, this isn't supposed to happen. So when those places are being hit, one month before the presidential election, which has been of major concern across the board, I can th I think it can you can easily say, no matter what your political standing is, everyone's very concerned by this election and our options. Not only that, the parties that have candidates running are also very concerned because they know people aren't excited about the candidates. Very worried about what the outcome of the vote will be. Two of the primary swing states are Georgia and North Carolina, who just got hit with mass devastation right before the election was to take place, wiping out who knows how many uh, voting polls and locations in those counties which are now getting switched over to mail-in ballots. The easiest ballot to manipulate and to cause voter fraud with are mail-in ballots. So now these very key swing counties and swing states are all moving over to that. There's no other option right before the election. So again, it's very interesting. Um, that susceptibility that's there, you know? Totally. Uh, another thing that stood out to me, um, our colleague, Olivia, Olivia Ray, posted a TikTok that it's sus how these places, the Carolinas, um, North Georgia, like Appalachia, right, is where homesteading is a preserved art and even in some places yeah. a reviving art and way of living right like living off grid independent of the government how many homesteads have been wiped off the map after this storm mm -hmm. wow i know so many people yeah. that moved out to north carolina for that in the last few mm -hmm. years yeah i think with that like we all want to send our love and our prayers to anyone who was affected by Hurricane Helene or who is about to be affected by Hurricane Milton. Um, these things are very serious and we don't mean to speak about this or the conspiracy theories to be disrespectful in any way um, to anyone who is going through or has gone through that. But I think it's important that we don't take anything off the table. I think it's important to be able to have open conversation and talk about theories. And I think it becomes really scary when, um, you know, censorship gets involved and you're not even allowed to talk about ideas or theories or um, what could have happened. That I think is the dangerous area that we get into um, where we don't allow people to discuss or, or think for themselves. So thank you for those who continue to be free thinkers. And, um, you know, of course we send our love and our thoughts with everybody who's experiencing things now and who will experience things very soon. Mm -hmm. Speaking All of, of Savannah, do you want to um, invite as well to our free event coming no, up on? Friday and the rest of the month? Yes. This Friday, the 11th of October, we're opening up for the public a candlelight vigil for all the tragedies going on in the world. It's We just had a crazy eclipse season, um, which really ramped up a lot of crazy large mass chaoses happening all at the same time. Um, thinking of those in Gaza and Lebanon, um, mm -hmm. In the Carolinas and Georgia and Florida, who are all affected by these huge, devastating tragedies. Um, might I add, all of which the United States has their hand in. 
which is kind of why we got on here and had this podcast episode, but we're going to be sitting together. This space is for anyone who wants to come and grieve, mourn, uh, and then find hope again. If that's something that has dwindled in you, or maybe you feel like you've lost, maybe you do feel like you're helpless in this. Like, how do I know which of these many tragedies to help? It's like, it almost feels like every week there's a a new one, right? Mm -hmm. How do I, like, I'm just one person. Uh, What can I possibly do in this, right? It's very, very easy, easily. And by design, as Lauren said, to get into that space of helplessness, hopelessness. But we're hoping to restore that within all of our attendees' hearts and then sending as much love, Reiki, healing, high vibes, golden light to the people affected by these tragedies as possible. And just just hold space for it, you know, just come together and be like, our brothers and sisters are hurting. Let's acknowledge that and let's do what we can energetically as in our personal life, we do what we can logistically. So that is this Friday night, normal class time in the portal, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, And if you got nothing else out of this episode, which I feel like we've prefaced and disclaimed throughout very well. Um, don't trust the government. I think you should just always question everything, especially the things that you think you know. Just stand, mm-hmm. just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they just, the United States government just sent 40,000 troops to Ukraine and 1,000 to the Carolinas. And if that doesn't speak volumes, I don't know what does. Yep. Also, billions in aid to Israel, but has said that they have no budget left to help any of the South East. And get if help. you were able to grab any of the government's funding, which was seven hundred fifty dollars per household in the Carolinas, uh, you had to apply for that online. When these people have no power. No powers and a computer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I think, and again, to be right. clear, like this is, this is, we are not pro any party. It, it, this is, I don't think that this is being done um, on behalf of the people. I think this is being yes. done on behalf yeah. of maintaining money ties. Mm-hmm. Precisely, policy is not happening for the people and that's the biggest thing to really like wake up to doesn't mean that there are not individuals who are trying to help the people inside of all of these massive systems and organizations there are plenty but it's happening Mm -hmm. at a bigger level it's happening at a much bigger level it's happening at a very high level um and last thing i want to say next week if you happen to watch this episode later than october 11th because we're just recording this on the 9th It'll be up probably by tomorrow. We have our free event on the 11th, but we will also have a free open to the public workshop on October 23rd. So everyone hopefully would be able to make it to that who's listening to this episode. It is called Sensitivity to Superpower. We are going to be giving you very valuable tools from all three lineages that us three specialize in, shamanism, occult studies, and dharmic studies to develop your psychic and intuitive gifts as a highly sensitive person feel more empowered in your life, learn how to build better boundaries um, and step into your power ultimately. So please come through to that. It's needed more than ever, right? With everything that we're talking about and facing. Yes, I just want to reiterate the in time sensitivity to superpower free workshop is October 23rd, 6 to 8 Eastern, 3 to 5 Pacific. And it's amazing. And links will be below. So yeah. all links below. Love you all. Thanks for watching. Let us know your theories in the comments. We'd love to hear it. And we hope to see you guys there. Love you guys.